so far we have seen passive optical networks and we have gone into into the due detail um, the only difference between the passive optical network and the next generation active optical networks is going to be in the devices in this module we'll quickly look at the uh, overview of the topology that is not going to be much different from passive optical networks then we'd look at the way how traffic engineering can be implemented in active optical networks uh, through the adoption of the control plane as in GMPLS. Um, so let's start with the topology first. The topology for active optical network is not very much different from passive optical network. Uh, both of these actually are based on the concept of aggregation and splitting. However, the fundamental difference between passive and active is surely going to be there we had passive splitting and passive aggregation. Here we are going to have active elements such as switches. These switches replace those splitters and that is all. The active optical networks are essentially end-to-end -end Ethernet based like passive optical networks. Um, and of course, the switches at the central office are going to be essentially the same as the aggregation switch. So once we were doing passive splitting and passive aggregation, here we are going to have active aggregation through the switches. Let's look at the overall network of uh, how the AON is going to look like. If you look at the inside, we have the next generation access network and we have a home network. The access network is looking like a mesh and indeed it is a mesh. Here we have different uh, access network sites. It means each of these is a network with users connected to it. Uh, all these are connected in a mesh formation. On the right hand side, we have the core network. It actually means that uh, the entire access network or a mesh of access networks is connected to the core network. The core network could be any other technology or it could also be based on uh, basically active optical networking. However, in order to provide interfacing between these two, we need access edge site that is some kind of um, the network to network interface. On the left hand side, we see that we have uh, different home networks. Uh, these home networks are uh, essentially small networks which are housed within a single building either for the residential use or for commercial use. Uh, however, to provide interfacing with the access network, we need the uh, gateways as the uh, premises gateway sites. Now, with this um, overall understanding, we just look at the mesh networking concept of it. The next generation, all optical, uh, active optical networks are base, based on the concept of mesh. As you know, uh, mesh actually has more than one links between two vertices. So it naturally is meant to achieve something at the cost of extra fiber optic deployment. This is to achieve number one, flexibility, and number two, higher recoverability in the case of fiber cut or some natural or man-made disaster. Uh, these uh, devices which are connected to each other uh, are connected through the gateway sites that we have already discussed. Uh, there is a provision to have more than one uh, connect access network connectivity through the gateway site to provide resilience as well. And then the core network is connected through the access edge site that we've already discussed. Now for this active optical network, uh, there's a requirement to provide management services uh, and to provide better quality of service through traffic engineering. Um, in, uh, in these next generation uh, active optical networks, the traffic engineering and unified network management that is the control plane is achieved for access, distribution and the core through a variant of MPLS called the generalized multi-protocol label switching. So GMPLS is basically a general uh, labeling protocol, uh, labeling and switching protocol that works for these uh, active optical networks because uh, not only IP is going to be there because uh, there are certain other switching techniques which have been there either as legacy, legacy systems like the time division multiplexing 
wavelength division multi multiplexing or even fiber link switching so in order to accommodate all these uh, some kind of unification was required so uh, gmpls can be used to provide the traffic engineering and unified network management now uh, gmpls actually has been there for for quite a while as a control plane for uh, wavelength division multiplexed optical networks uh, however uh, it can in, be easily interfaced for uh, ethernet because ethernet is a layer 2 uh, technology all these gmpls um, and the mpls and gmpls variants can actually work at the um, shim layer or the layer below the data link layer so uh, uh, ethernet frames can be encapsulated within these mpls uh, uh, frames so this concept is known as the ethernet tun tunneling uh, we may look at it in more detail once we come across ethernet tunneling but for now just understand it is a means to encapsulate ethernet frames within gmpls um, frame structure